This pattern is a Clouser minnow, which we are calling the Mummy Chug Clouser, uh, mainly to imitate the Mummy Chug minnow. Uh, one thing that makes it a little different is that it has a mixed belly of yellow and orange bucktail. So before I tie the fly, I'm going to take my bucktail. Uh, in this case, I'm going to start with orange. And I'm going to cut a group of it off of the uh, hair to hide, or the tail. And then I'm going to take that material, and notice I'm keeping the tips up and the butt down. And I'm going to spread it open so it lays flat. So instead of being a bunched group of hair, it is flat and laid out side by side. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut a clump off of the tail and I'm going to spread it out so that it's flat, pretty much equaling the orange. Um, and then I'm going to take the orange and lay it right on top of the yellow. So now I have two clumps. The tails are all facing the same direction. In this case, the top and the butts are facing the bottom. So now what I'm going to basically do <coughs> is blend that hair together with my hand. There are a few ways you can do this. This is just the quickest way that I know. Um, and I can make uh, enough, blend enough hair to make several flies. So I just start pulling groups of yellow, putting it toward the middle, groups of orange, putting it toward the middle, uh, trying to get everything evenly blended. So you have yellow and orange blended pretty equally throughout that clump. Now here's where you want to look at it and say if you want a little bit lighter tail, put a little more yellow in. If you want a little bit darker tail, put a little more orange in it. So you just kind of have to judge a little bit by that. But I like to try to keep them fairly even. Now once I get it to where, where I like the blend, I will take the tips and I will put them in a hair stacker with the tips down. So once I do that, I'm going to make a couple taps and then pull them out. And the tips should be nice and even. So you don't have to worry about lining those tips up perfectly as you blend the hairs because with the hair stacker, magic. So now I will separate that group into, I can make about two flies with that bunch of hair. So I'm going to take half of it, put it aside, and then I'm going to tie my dumbbell eye in. So the rest of this is exactly a Clouser minnow. So I am going to bring my thread about a third of the way behind the eye of the hook on the hook shank. I am going to take a dumbbell eye, and I will place the dumbbell eye on top of the hook. And actually this will be the belly of the fly. Um, and then I'm just going to make a couple loose wraps um, just to get it on there. Nothing, nothing yet to hold it down. And once I get a position where it's nice and straight and evenly uh, positioned on the hook, I will start making cross wraps or X wraps in both directions using pressure. Notice the hook is moving, so I'm using pressure to hold it down on the hook. And that's what's going to help keep it from moving around later. And then I start doing under over wraps. And I usually do about 10 or 12 of each. Once I get that done, I start taking my thread and I go about 12 wraps on top of the hook shank, but under the dumbbell eyes. And what it does is just pull all those wraps together and tighten them up a little bit more. Now, once I get that set, uh, sometimes I will take some head cement or tough fly and I will put a little bit of that on the top and the bottom of the threads and then cure it. And that will help prevent it from chipping off in rocks or breaking off. It'll just make it uh, have more protection for that eyes to stay on. Now I take my clump of hair that I've already mixed. And the tips are still nice and straight. This is about half of that clump. Now I need to even the butt ends. So when I get my length, I take my scissors and I just cut the butt ends so they're nice and straight. That gives me a good tie-in point. Now I want you to notice my thread between the dumbbell eye and the eye of the hook. Don't try to tie the hair down with your thread behind the eye of the hook. Uh, it makes it much harder to grab the hair and tie it in. 
you'll end up with a mess. So for example, if I tie it, notice it's real hard to grab those ends. So if I start in the middle of that, and I lay my butt ends of the hair behind the eye of the hook, and I grab that in the middle of that spot, I make a loose wrap, I make another loose wrap, and then I start putting pressure to tie it down, then that hair will stay controlled. It'll, it'll stay pretty much in place. So as you do that, you'll get to the point where um, you can get used to using a lot of pressure, and that hair will not pull out. So if you have any hairs that missed, pull them out. Now's a good time to get rid of them. Then pull the hair down to the shank of the hook and then make a couple wraps behind the dumbbell eye. Not, not real tight, but just enough to hold it to the shank of the hook. Okay. Notice I do not bring my thread all the way back to the bend of the hook like a lot of people do. I like my tail to be a little fluffier, add a little more bulk to the fly. So I only go about four wraps behind the dumbbell eye and then come back. So now I will take my flash. In this case, it's going to be a mixture of gold and copper crystal flash. You can use any flash you like, and you can use copper or gold. But this pattern does call for copper or gold flash. I use both. So I put it halfway over the hook, and then I tie it down at the halfway point on top of the hook, but on one side of the hook point. Now I fold it back on the other side of the hook bend and then I wrap it down and make a couple wraps behind the dumbbell eye just to keep it in line and on top of the fly. So that acts as a lateral line and gives it some flash within the fly. So with that you're almost done. Now all you were going to do is take your olive bucktail and once you get the amount that you want you will cut it off the hide. Um, you will um, cut, once the tips are lined up, you are going to cut the butt end square again. And notice I have the thread hanging between the dumbbell eye and the eye of the hook again. And I will put the butt ends, lay it down behind the eye of the hook. And then again, I will make a couple of loose wraps just to bring that hair down to the hook. And then the third wrap, I start using pressure. And then once I get it tied in, then I can really lock it down. You can also add a little bit of head cement if you wish in here to help lock it in. I build that little bit of taper and then I whip finish the fly. And once I get to the point where I'm happy with the head and um, get the whip finish on there, then I'm done. Now notice I used white thread. You can use any color that you want. Um, Sometimes olive or red or even yellow looks pretty good on this fly or just black. I like white because I can take a um, Sharpie marker and I can mark an olive color on the top and a little bit of yellow on the bottom just to get a nice um, more blended head in terms of color. Or also with the white when you add your head cement if you don't use a lot of wraps the color will shine through as you can see here. Um, you can see the olive and you can see the orange and the yellow for the belly. I did not mark this with a pen. Um, but once you put some head cement on there, the colors will bleed through. So again, you get a little bit more natural taper. That is the finished fly. Hope you enjoy it. Okay.